So at this point, I'm convinced that Starfield behind closed doors is in development hell. And I'm gonna explain to you guys why I think that, how I came to that conclusion. Previously, I was still skeptical, right? And I was like, yeah, they're gonna turn it around. They've turned around other games. I mean, it is Bethesda, you know, we get all the glitch memes and all that, but they know what they're doing, okay? It's a big thing for Xbox. Now, today is the last day of January. And I was thinking to myself, hold on, wasn't there supposed to be like a big developer direct in January showing all those new exciting games for Xbox, turning the brand around? I didn't hear anything. Googled it, it happened and nobody noticed. I was talking to some guys on, on the Discord, by the way, this channel has a Discord channel, okay? Link is down in the description. It's free to join, go join now. I was talking to the guys and they were as well like, what, it happened? Nobody noticed. So I Googled it, okay? And in fact, it happened six days ago on January 25th. They called it the Xbox and Bethesda Developer Direct. And I was like, okay, so it's just Bethesda games, right? Xbox and Bethesda Developer, no, it's not just Bethesda games, okay? It's Zenimax Online Studios, Mojang, Arcane, Turn 10 Studios, and Tango Gameworks. I was like, okay, cool. Surely they showed something cool. Here's what they showed. Minecraft Legends got a release date. They showed some Redfall gameplay coming May 2nd. Okay, that got a release date. Forza Motorsport got some gameplay. Hi-Fi Rush got a segment. And The Elder Scrolls Online got an update. Like, I think some of the content is now free to play or something like that. And I was like, oh yeah, that's why nobody heard about it. Because it was completely meaningless. I mean, that lineup is super thin to build a developer's direct showcase around. There was no meat to the bone. There's just nothing there. And ironically, in an interview three days after that showcase, Phil Spencer admitted that 2022 was a disappointing year for Xbox in terms of games and that our commitment to our fans has to be that we have to have a steady release of games. And we didn't do enough of that. Three days after their big developer's direct showcase. But here's how this links to Starfield, right? Because I was thinking, sure, they're not putting Starfield into this January showcase because they have so much to show that everything would overshadow Starfield, you know, and there's so much stuff that they have to show us that they give Starfield its own standalone event, right? Makes sense, right? If you have so much to show, you don't want to have your hero piece mixed and jumbled up with all these other games. But that wasn't the case. They had nothing to show. There was nothing at the showcase that was exciting or new or fresh. So why not add Starfield in? Why, why separate those two showcases if this one is already as thin as you can imagine it? Why would you give your hero game a standalone event that e not even the event has a release date yet? I tell you why. Because the game is in development hell and it's just not ready to be shown. Bethesda is sweating blood behind closed doors. I mean, look, I'm speculating. I don't know this. I don't work with Bethesda. But at this point, I'm fairly confident that that is the case. I was suspecting it previously. Them trying to make a game with a thousand planets and base building and diversity on all the planets and space flight and trying to make all this happen on an engine that was already struggling with Fallout 4. It's like, yeah, that's more than ambitious. But now looking at this news... To me, personally, my suspicion has been confirmed. This game is in a terrible state. I think Bethesda right now is realizing that all their ambitions, all the things that they showed in these gameplay demos and everything we've seen so far of Starfield is not coming together in the way they wanted to come together and at least not in the time frame they wanted to come together. And I was just speaking to someone else uh, as well on the Discord, by the way, of this channel, link in the description, join now. And we were saying as well, like how much damage this terrible launch did to Cyberpunk 2077, right? That game came out in a catastrophic state and till this day, it has not recovered. No matter how good it is now or how, how fixed it is, sure, it had a little bit of an uptick, right, in September where more people played it, but at this point, it's basically dead again, right? It's been losing players more or less steadily since then. I mean, I get it, these are just Steam numbers, okay, but this is all we have to go on. It very much feels like Cyberpunk, with that terrible launch, lost all its momentum, okay? It's like first impressions matter. You get that impression, you see all these glitch compilations popping up everywhere, that is the picture that people have in their head. And then to come back from that and turn it around, do a no man's sky on it, is incredibly hard work, it is almost impossible. Especially with a game that is as highly anticipated as Cyberpunk was. And that applies to Starfield as well. And Todd Howard knows this, and Bethesda knows this, okay? they understand that they cannot release this game in an incredibly buggy state because if they do that, the first impression is ruined, people will move away to the next game and nobody will care. And the big ace that Microsoft has up their sleeve, being like, oh, every time we talk about exclusive games missing on Xbox, 
Starfield. We have Starfield. Look at the beautiful Starfield card we have here. If they mess this card up, do it, man. I don't know where Microsoft and Xbox can go from there. Because this is their big shot. This is the shot they have. Someone put this nicely together, okay? In 2014, Phil Spencer at E3 said, we have the best lineup in a long time. In 2015, he said the greatest games lineup in Xbox history at E3. In 2016, Phil Spencer at E3 said, it could be one of the most special years ever for Xbox. In 2017, Phil Spencer promised more exclusive games than in 2016. In 2018, at E3, he said, this will be Microsoft's biggest Xbox show ever. In 2019, he teased unannounced games and xCloud progress. And it's like a red thread that has been going through all of Xbox history in recent years. I mean, going back to the Xbox One generation, and now we are, I would argue, almost in the late stage of the Xbox series generation. It's, it, I, I, honestly, it leaves me speechless. I don't know what to say. It is so disastrous. They have so many studios. They have so much money. They have so much workforce, so much creative talent. Where is it? And everyone, I mean, I, I do these videos regularly, right? I did another video a while back where I spoke about how so many people on Twitter are so upset at Phil Spencer. Nobody wants Phil Spencer to stay at this point. Even the hardcore Xbox fanboys are like, bro, you gotta move on. This is too much. Let Phil Spencer go. We don't want any more of this. It's been going on for too long. But still, every now and then I do get a comment under these videos where people are like, no, bro, you don't understand. They bought all this in 2000 this and now they need four or five years. And it's like, no, dude. It's been long enough. We've been waiting so, so long. There is nothing there. It's not coming anymore. At least that's how it feels like. And if no major things happen within the next one and a half, maybe two years with Xbox, in, in the last breath of this Xbox series generation, then I don't know where Xbox can go from here, okay? If they mess up Starfield, and I'm telling you, it's just a prediction at this point, I get it, I might be wrong, I'm happy to be disproven, I would love for Starfield to be an incredible game, but it's gonna launch behind expectations, okay? Maybe they're scaling it back to a point where it's just disappointing because they've promised so much and then delivered so little, or or they're keeping it in terms of the scale, but it releases in a terrible state. And it's, it's like, I don't want to say almost unplayable, but it's either or. It's either of those two things. The, the Starfield launch will not go smooth. This is a bold prediction, but I'm 100% convinced of it. I can't wait for the memes. I can't wait for the show to unfold. It's not going to be great. So where can Xbox go from here? Honestly, what do you guys think? Like, leave your thoughts on this down in the comments because at this point, I'm speechless. I don't know what to say anymore. The, the fact that I missed this showcase, I didn't even realize that it's happened and then you read what they actually showed is like, dude, what are you doing? What is going on? It's unbelievable to me. Anyway, guys, that's it. If you want to discuss this, again, leave your thoughts down in the comments. I'm happy to discuss it with you there. But also, please join our Discord. Links in the description. Loads of like-minded people over there talking games, talking politics, venting about problems. You can do it all there, okay? I'm hanging out there as well. I'd love to see you there. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and smash the like button on your way out. I'll see you in the next one. I'm out. Bye.